Uh, Scott, um, heartbreaking way to lose a game in these circumstances and in this environment. What's your immediate reaction right now? I thought it was a fantastic game, exciting. Uh, one that I think the players you know, cherish to play in. So uh, the crowd was fantastic and big shots and it had everything you'd want in a game like that. And we got the short end of it, but um, you know, we've made our share also during the course of the season. So, uh, but uh, you know, congratulations to them. But yeah, I thought it was just, it was a heck of a game. It was exciting. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's everything you want in a basketball game. Uh, you ended up losing it at, at the end of the day. I mean, well, what do you think the difference was in the end? I mean, you can absolutely, once again, not fault the effort and the fight of your team. Well, I guess you just said it. We can't fault anything. They made the shots and we didn't. Uh, I, I think our guys did fantastic. You know, we missed some assignments. They missed some assignments. Back and forth is what it is. You just move on and enjoy the moment. Uh, I'm not upset by any means or disheartened. Um, it's just a basketball game. It's not life and death, my friend. Spectacular performance from the man next year. I mean, he's, he's, he's a big reason why you're in this grand final. I mean, and again, he gave, gave you every chance to win this game. What did, what did you make of, of his performance today? Yeah, obviously he made some uh, big shots and, and came out with a, great, with a great mindset and, you know, got us going early. And, you know, he continued his pace throughout the game and was just solid across the board. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously a huge factor to have 36 points for us and, um, you know, kept us in the game. I know it's very raw right now, Josh, but what's your immediate feeling after, after that game? We got another game in Sydney on uh, Wednesday. So that's what I'm thinking about. The series is still alive. That has to be the approach, doesn't it? You just know that you're still in the same situation where if you win three more games, then you can still do this thing. Uh, we've been in that mode for the past two months. Uh, I don't know. We go into every game expecting to win. Or if we end up, like Coach said, on the short end of the stick, we move on to the next one. It's another must-win game, but we've been playing in must-win games for quite some time now. In terms of experiences you've had throughout your career, playing in front of 5,000 fans like you did today that made that much noise were so supportive of you, and then to play the way you did personally, where does this stack up in terms of your career sort of highlights, even though I know you lost again. Uh, I mean, I played on in six different countries across five or six different continents where basketball is life in Turkey and in Spain and in front of thousands more people. But that was the most electric crowd that I played in front of. Um, they've really grown throughout the season and, and they played their hearts out for the lack of better words. They were a big reason why we were in that game and I thought they were spectacular, you know, second to none. We've talked a lot about it in the build-up to the grand final, but how you've experienced bringing a grand final to these people and playing in front of this atmosphere. They didn't have, a, have an NBL team this time last year. They hadn't seen this team play before. What's, what's the experience like? Like I said, it was spectacular, second to none. I haven't played anywhere in the NBL with a, a better fan base or a louder arena, despite um, you know some, some arenas having more people in it. Um, these fans have been... Incredible. We have people fighting for tickets, and that's what you want. Um, I think our media ops and our front office has done a great job of getting us involved with uh, the community. How much do you love the moments at the end of the game like you had where the ball's in your hands and it's up to you to make a big shot or not and you're able to step up to make it? Um, how much do you love those moments? I love that my teammates trust me to make those shots and take those shots and look for me. Um, I'm just trying to do what I can do to win the game. And there's going to be times like Melbourne early in the year when it's a different guy stepping up to make that shot. So I just do the best I can with any situation and leave the rest to God. Once, once that ball leaves my hand, there's nothing I can do about it. So I just put my best rep on it and you know, leave the rest up to him. Scott, when you go into game three, you know that you're going to get everything from your team. They know that they'll give you absolutely everything. What, what do you need to see go right for you to, to get that win? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's obviously an extremely difficult question. I mean, uh, we definitely have to bring the intensity that we brought in this building today to go play, and we just have to be slightly smarter in some areas. But uh, they're a hell of a team over there, and they got scores all over the place, and they're oozing with talent. And uh, you can't uh, take a, a minute off against them. So um, we'll just go in there Wednesday and swing away and enjoy ourselves and. We're in the grand finals. 
it's not again it's this is this is enjoyable this is a celebration of tasmanian basketball on display that's how i see it you guys might want to twist it and turn it and do whatever you want about winning and losing this is a celebration uh, i think you should be excited as well going into this game i mean there's every chance there'll be something close to fifteen thousand people there on wednesday night the whole country can be watching there's a lot to be excited about isn't it yeah that's what i've been saying we're this is a celebration Thanks, guys. Matt, anything? Beautiful.